In this election, we are campaigning strongly against the State Government's proposal to close Fremantle Port and replace it with a new large container facility in Coburn Sound. And we want to explain to you why and what we think the sustainable transport alternatives are. Importantly, the State Government's underlying assumption for their proposal is the assumption that in only five decades there will be a three-fold increase in the volume of containers through Fremantle Port and with it the consumption of consumer goods by every single individual in Western Australia. Now let's stop and consider this properly. A three-fold increase in consumption by every single person in Western Australia, not only is this implausible, but it strongly suggests that we will have utterly failed to meet our climate reduction targets to prevent a hothouse earth. That kind of thinking has to change. There are other reasons to oppose the closing of Fremantle Port too. The Westport Task Force did not properly account for the environmental damage that would be caused to Coburn Sound with the construction of a new container terminal. In fact, they reduced that criteria in their assessment. Furthermore, they did not properly account for the embedded energy or value of the existing port, and that includes the greenhouse gases that would effectively be lost or wasted if we abandon the existing infrastructure. Finally, there's every reason to fear that if built, a new wharf at Coburn Sound would be constructed as a public-private partnership in which the private partner would have effective ownership of the port via a long-term lease. We've already seen this happen at Port of Melbourne. We've been through that experience with our railway lines under the Liberal governments, we don't want it to happen again. Based on current growth rates, there are still decades of capacity left at Fremantle Port. The real challenge with the port is congestion. And let's think of that in two parts. Firstly, freight to the port. There's a number of things we can do to reduce the impact of truck traffic, such as incentivising truck movements outside of peak hour and removing empty running, whereby trucks either go or come from the port empty. We also need to incentivise the transition to an electric fleet to minimise the impact of diesel particulate and noise pollution on surrounding suburbs. The other thing we have to do is to get more freight on rail. Now already Fremantle Port has around 20%, the highest of any capital city, of a rail share. To push it even further, we need to build more intermodal hubs where shuttle trains take the containers and then we co-locate other freight functions at those intermodal hubs, such as container packing and unpacking, container storage, container repair, and so on. That reduces the need for truck movements between those functions. Of course, we still have truck movements. Trucks still need to take the container the last mile to the front door of the shop, the warehouse, or the factory. But we spread those truck movements more evenly across Perth, and we reduce their impact. And that's important, because the problem with the idea of moving all the freight functions down to that outer harbour is that we don't solve the underlying problems with our current freight distribution system, we really relocate them somewhere else, put them in someone else's backyard. That's not good enough. In fact, in the last few years, the number of truck movements to and from the port has plateaued. What that means is the greatest contributor to congestion in and around Fremantle is not the port, but it's private motor traffic. It should be obvious then that neither the outer harbour nor row eight are the solution. What we're calling for is serious new quality rapid transit, connecting Fremantle to Coburn and Fremantle to Murdoch. The answer to congestion is not new freeways, it's better public transport. Renewable energy experts have refined a plan for a wind farm at North Fremantle. Just imagine that, our working port supplied by green power and our port in our city supported by sustainable transport solutions. Fremantle's a port city, let's keep it that way.